I really enjoy shooting HDR, and Costa Rica and many other countries like it are great subject matters for high dynamic range photography. Now this is not over the top obnoxious HDR, this is HDR for technical benefits. You see, as you're shooting, the environments have a lot of diversity in the actual exposure. Your sky can be quite bright, or maybe it's even washed out. And down in the valley or in other parts, you could have really rich shadows. I found across the board that HDR was essential. Now, while we'll take a look at some other HDR techniques, I want to talk about shooting a panorama specifically. When we were in the field, I regularly shot panoramic photos. And if the environment really was a lot of contrast in the scene, I would shoot HDR. For this, make sure the camera is absolutely positively on a solid tripod. Then, turn on the auto bracketing features on your camera. If you do it right, you'll have anywhere from three to seven shots that you can make. This will allow you to capture a range of photos with different exposures, but the composition and all of the other settings will be exactly the same. Once you take one photo, you'll pan. Now, the amount that you pan will depend upon your camera's lens and its field of view. But ideally, you'll have 25% image overlap from one image to the next, meaning that as I frame a shot and then I pan to the next, 25% of the image details will be the same in both shots. This will make it a lot easier when you go to combine the two and put it together. Now, you have to balance speed with smoothness. Because you're shooting panoramic photos, you want to get pretty quickly from one side to the other. If you take too long to shoot the shot, the clouds in the sky may change a lot. And this is really made worse by the fact that now you're shooting with multiple shots for HDR. I really like to use a mirrorless camera for this because it's very fast, but whatever camera you use, make sure you have it in high speed burst mode. Take the shot, fire off the burst, quickly pan. Take the shot, fire off the burst, and quickly pan. I use a panoramic head that actually has markings on it with degrees. Now, you don't have to have a perfect turn each time, but this makes it a lot easier to know how much to turn it and I didn't have to stop and look through the viewfinder to make sure that the shot was composed each time. All right, we got all the shots, so why don't we take a look at putting those together? The act of creating a high dynamic range panorama is really doing two types of processing. Now, I'm gonna use HDR Soft Photomatics for this, and if you don't have the application, just download the 30-day demo. We're gonna take advantage of the pro version that makes it easy to batch process, so the steps are pretty simple. What we're gonna do is merge all of the bracketed photos with each set. This will allow us to make a high dynamic range photo for that particular set. This means that the three or five photos get merged into one and we show the full dynamic range of the scene. But because we don't want a lot of variation, it's important that we use the same settings. So one of the things I really like is that Photomatix makes it easy to batch process the photos pretty quickly and use the same consistent settings. Once that's done, we'll just take advantage of Adobe Photoshop, or if you have Photoshop Elements, it will also work, and you can merge those photos together using a straightforward tool called Photo Merge. All right, let's jump in and do both parts and get a great looking image.